It is great to be here in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I am so honored to have you join me today. It's going to be a great few hours. I've got lots of things to talk about here on the front end, then we're going to turn it over to some other folks to lead you through the rest of the program. Uh, let me start by saying it's uh, always a privilege to be able to embrace diversity and to accommodate individuals uh, who are particular in our community, and i got to tell you, it's great to have our, our folks up here who are professional signers, uh, for those of you with hearing impairments, and I did have to tell them on the front end, I said, I know you're professionals, but I've been known to speak at 40 words a minute up to gusts of 80, and so if I go too fast, don't hesitate to throw something at me uh, for your counterpart, uh, so I'll slow down a bit. But it is great to have them here today. They do a great job. I enjoyed meeting them. And I'm so glad you're here. Let me just say thank you to uh, Chairwoman Hamilton, who does a great job. She's a true public servant. Rarely do we have uh, elected officials in the sciences step up. And so when we have those types of individuals with particular expertise, it serves the state of New Mexico so well. And it was great to be able to greet her this morning and say, hey, I saw you on the front page of the paper above the fold. You know what I mean? On the front, front half, right? Above the fold. As a politician, you're always putting it's good stuff. You're always trying to get above the fold, right? Because most of us don't buy the paper, right? We walk by it, but we see what's above the fold. She said, I was. And I said, yes. I said, you were on the front page of the Albuquerque Journal above the fold. She said, oh my goodness, I had a 7 o'clock conference call. I've been so busy this morning. I was so excited to come be with you here at the Department of Public Safety. I didn't even see the paper. I said, well, I brought it for you. I said, it's awesome. A front page above the fold. Did you see it? Hamilton is coming to New Mexico. She said, well, that's not me. I said, oh, I was confused. I'm sorry. <laughs> Madam Chair, we're so glad you're here. Thanks for your public service and thanks for providing a great meeting this morning. Now, for those of you in the finance sector, which is everybody here, uh, you understand uh, what it is to host events. And I came to learn after being elected state auditor that it is uh, sometimes challenging to reach uh, goals and when you have uh, great ideas and you want to execute, you learn that there's a particular way to do things in finance. And the DFA has some interesting rules, no? <laughs> so I said, look, I said, uh, if we're going to capture this audience for three hours, we best provide at least some coffee and some donuts, bizcochitos, something. you got to provide a little comodita, <laughs> no, right? Because you're going to have it for three hours. you got to serve a little cafecito or something. And they said, oh, Mr. Auditor, we'd love to do that. But unfortunately, DFA doesn't let you do that. <laughs> and, uh, and they said, but we could get an exception. I said, okay, great. I said, I got to speak to about 1,500 people over the course of six sessions. And so I need to buy some coffee, right? It's the right thing to do. How would I put you in my house for three hours, talk to you, make you listen for three hours, and not give you a cup of coffee? What kind of host is that, right? They said, it's easy. You just have to write a white paper. <laughs> A white paper? What are you talking about? A white paper? They said, oh yeah, it'd probably be three or four pages long and you have to justify why you want to buy a cup of coffee for the people that are coming to your training. I said, forget about it. I said, I'll go get sponsors. <laughs> so you know what I did? The first sponsor I went to was my wife. I said, sweetheart, we're buying the coffee and, and cookies for the first audible training. Well, that went over okay. Even though I'm a state employee now, after practicing law for 17 years, the budget's changed a little bit in my household. <laughs> now you can appreciate what I'm talking to, right? I'm, I'm telling you, it's changed a bit, but we were able to sponsor the coffee and the snacks for the first one. And then the second honor rule training came up and I went back to the boss. That would be my wife, Maria Lely Santiago Colón. And uh, she's very smart and she runs the house. And, she said, this is very nice. I really am excited that you're living your dream of being state auditor, but we're not sponsoring the coffee for every single one of your annual trainings. Go find another sponsor. <laughs> so in fact, that's exactly what I did. I thought, okay, well, what am I? I'm the state auditor who I work closest with, the New Mexico Society of CPAs, and they have a great team over there. And it wasn't, I didn't even have to finish asking because that organization is so supportive of the partnership they have with each and every one of you and your auditors. And I want to say, I hope that Mr. Daniel O. Trujillo from Kubiak and Melton, where'd he go? I'm glad he left, because he's a better dresser than me. He's making me look <laughs> But Daniel Trujillo from Kubiak and Melton, uh, uh, you met him this morning. He was speaking here on behalf of the New Mexico Society of CPAs. Kelsey stepped up right away and said, we'd be happy to host the refreshments 
in Santa Fe and in Albuquerque, but you're on your own for all your auto, other auto rule trainings because we have a budget too. So it was no problem, but I want to say thank you. All that to say thank you, though, because we have to start every day with gratitude, and I get to do that this morning. I get to be grateful to the New Mexico Society of CPAs for hosting your refreshments this morning. In terms of logistics, Gary, the uh, restrooms are in the back. So get it. And then over here, right during the break, if you can last for 90 minutes of this presentation, of which I'm only going to take up about half, because he said, you only get 45 minutes, so don't run over schedule. And I said, no problem, you know me, I'm very shy, and I don't like to be on the microphone. <laughs> How come you're laughing? I don't get it. No, in all seriousness, what happens here is, on the break, we'll open these doors here, and it's magical. You go through those doors, there's going to be donuts and coffee and a great little conversation area. Because here's the other thing, here at DPS, they're very busy. They have another training going on right over there. So we really want to encourage you to gather on this side so that we don't disrupt the folks on that side, right? Our incredible first responders, public serv servants, and public safety uh, are meeting on that side. So if you will, join me for refreshments here uh, during the break. So let me start out by telling you a little bit more about why I'm so happy to be here and why I'm so honored to serve as your state auditor. And really, you have to understand the lens someone looks through to really appreciate the message they bring them. And since the office staff and the team at the Office of the State Auditor, who have every day for the last 102 days of awesome, have been embracing accountability, transparency, and excellence, they've already heard this story, so I'm going to introduce them real quick and ask them to stand, because right after that, they can nod off, because they've heard this story about 10 times already. <laughs> So I'm going to say, if you're with Team OSA, I'd like you to stand and be recognized. We've got a lot of our staff members here that work with you on a regular basis. Starting with the Chief, come on up. Everybody on Team OSA, please stand up and be recognized. Uh, we're part of the state of the state of New Mexico. Thank you very much. Let me tell you, I get to do this work every day. And like so many public servants and civil servants and employees at the municipal level, the county level, and the state level, See, I get handed a mic, which politely is usually followed by applause. No? But each of you go to work every day, and the people at Team OSA, they rarely get the microphone followed by applause. They just go into the work every day. They work hard to protect New Mexico's taxpayers. They work hard to do their jobs, just like each and every one of you. And rarely in New Mexico do we take the time to say we're thankful. So for me, as I travel all 33 counties of New Mexico, you can rest assured that one of the messages I take is that we need to step back, take a deep breath, and make sure that we're valuing the employees who choose a life of civil service. Because I know that each and every one of you could go be CFOs or work in departments in the private sector and make more money. But you choose to serve New Mexicans. And for that, I'm grateful. And I will never be heard on a mic giving a presentation without saying thank you to each and every one of you, and particularly to the members of my team at OSA that work tirelessly to protect and serve New Mexico taxpayers. So give yourselves a round of applause, huh? <laughs> now, why am I so grateful? You heard a little bit about me from DJ Frankie V. So let me add a little more texture. See, I grew up in New Mexico like most New Mexico families, in poverty. Like many, I required every single government program for survival. Whether it was the commodities, the Section 8 housing that put a roof over my head. And I grew up in a home with two parents who were disabled. And a little brother and a little sister. And see, every day of my childhood, I was in a position where I had to watch my father deteriorate before my very eyes. See, he had a horrible disease called muscular dystrophy. And I watched him deteriorate in through my teen years. And I knew one thing, that while I was losing my father, I'd never lose his dream. See, and as I was going through high school, getting ready to graduate, he took a dramatic turn. And ultimately passed. See, but what didn't pass was his dream. His dream was that I'd be the first in my family to go to college and that I'd be the first in my family to break the cycle of poverty. That intergenerational poverty that grips so many families in New Mexico. That was his dream. And he didn't take it with him. He left it with me. And as I stand before you today, 
I'm honored to be able to tell you that because of the support of community, the community that filled the gap for me to make sure I didn't slip through, the community allowed me to live my father's dream. And as I stand before you today, I'm your state auditor at the age of 49. And the reason I share that with you is because when I buried my father, he was 49 years old. So I stand before you today at the age he was when he was at the end of his road. And I have the humbling privilege of serving the state of New Mexico at that very same chapter in my life. And I will never forget the humility he passed on to me, the values of living a life of service and gratitude to repay the community that filled the gap for me. Because because of him and the values he instilled in me, I get to be here today. And the best part of the story is not really that I'm your state auditor or that I am the first in my family to go to college or the first in my family to break that cycle of poverty. But the best part of that story is that one generation out from that poverty, one generation out from Section 8 housing and blocks of cheese and powdered milk, my 21-year-old son, who is my father's namesake, Rafael, is on a presidential scholarship after graduating from Albuquerque High School in Martinez Town, New Mexico. He's on a presidential scholarship at George Washington University studying biomedical engineering. That's the story that I'm most proud of, and that should be the story for New Mexico families all over the state. How is it that you got back from Alamogordo, Otero County, beautiful New Mexico with the Sacramento Mountains on the east and beautiful people in the community? At midnight last night, you're back up on the roads of New Mexico by 6.30 this morning. How do you do that? I say, because I live a life of gratitude. Gratitude for the opportunity that at 49, I get to keep moving forward. Regardless of how many times I fall. I will continue to fall forward and move forward and be grateful for the opportunity to do that. So that's where I get my energy, that's why I'm grateful, and that's why I will always do everything I can to make you proud to be in partnership with the Office of the State Auditor. That's me. And I think it's important you understand the lens I look through every day when I serve in this office. I've had 102 days of awesome. It's about three and a half months down, 44 and a half months to go at least. In fact, I may be seeking a constitutional amendment so I can do more than two terms if you like me. <laughs> ah, maybe we'll work on that. Now team, think about working on that, but only after hours because we don't want any, you know, we don't want any issues there, okay? So let's talk a little bit about the Office of the State Auditor. That's me. That's my first slide. And then one of these. <laughs> see what they did? You want to see what they did? They do this to me all the time. They just do these little things to see if they can throw me off. But I can't be dissuaded. They have like three clickers up here. They don't care. <laughs> Only one of them works. They're like, let's see if we get them this time. <laughs> see, I can't be beat. I found a clicker. <laughs> the correct clicker. So let me just tell you a little bit. I'm going to get to cover the top lines. No? I've been practicing law for 17 years. I got a finance degree. I love this work that you do every day. Um, but we're going to have some great experts get into the, the meat and potatoes of why we're here today, no? because it's about the changes in the audit world. But I want to provide the context, some overview, and some of the direction the office is taking uh, under our team's leadership. So we set out very early on in uh, my work at the Office of the State Auditor to determine what values do we want to embrace. When people think of the Office of the State Auditor, what do we want them to think about? Right? And we said, let's talk about some words that really represent the work that we get to do and represent who we are. And so very quickly, um, I held a little contest in the office. No one said, okay, whoever comes up with the best words and slogan for our office, we get a $50 gift card to Ranch Way, Ranch House, Ranch what? Ranch House. Ranch House, okay, Ranch House. Ranch House. I grew up in Valencia County. What do I know about all the fancy restaurants here in Santa Fe? Sheesh. Ranch House. And then quickly was advised by my team that, no, Mr. Auditor, you cannot buy the gift card with state money. So again, guess what I did? I had to go to the boss and ask her, sweetheart, can we sponsor the $50 gift card from Ranch House for the office? And she gave me permission for that one. So I'm very pleased to say that, that the office 
in quick order, knew that for me, my life is about celebrating and embracing excellence. So whoever was thinking about how to win a gift card thought, well, we better put excellence because that's Colon's keyword. So they did, and they, and they said, what's the office of the auditor? It's all about accountability. And what do taxpayers really want from their government? They want transparency. They want transparency, accessibility, accountability, and I want to celebrate excellence. Because far too often in New Mexico, we're talking about being at the bottom of the good list and the top of the bad, and I'm done with that. Far too often above the fold, we're reading about that one school district that didn't get it right. We're not talking about the 99 that used to have 15 findings in their audit, and now they're down to one. We're not celebrating that school district, are we? We're only talking about the negative. So in my office, we got a little different approach. We're going to take the time to celebrate excellence in New Mexico, because I think taxpayers deserve it. I think the people that live in our state deserve it. And so we talk about accountability, transparency, and excellence every day in the office of the state auditor. We have got some great work going on there with our audits, as you might guess. When they were putting together these slides, they said, what are we going to lead with? And I said, well, we're the office of the state auditor. We best lead with auditing, right? And uh, we also provide uh, risk entity support. This is important to me. Because I need you to know that while sometimes we have to be in the gotcha game, I don't think it's fun. What's more fun is working as a partner with governmental agencies and our terrific IPAs around the state to say, we're your partner in getting you where you should be if you're not there today. That means our IPAs have to identify areas of risk, they have to be clear in their findings, and then we need to be partners to hold everybody accountable and work together to address those areas and get you where you need to be. So we also have the GAO, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in this slide here. We've got five distinct divisions in our office, of course, and as you know, we lead with our financial division, uh, the Office of the State Auditor. That's probably not surprising, right? And then we have our Special Investigations Division. This is a result of a, uh, my elected predecessor two terms ago, who really increased the work that goes on in the office as it relates to reaching out to the public, saying we need you to engage with us to help you identify, help us identify areas of concern and risk. And we created the Special Investigations Division. Then we have our Government Accountability Office, and my immediate elected predecessor uh, created this division. I think we have enough divisions. I'm not going to create any more divisions, huh? okay? Just so you know, because there's no more room on the slide. What am I going to <laughs> So the Government Accountability Office was created by my predecessor, and it's been doing amazing work. Because as you know, we're not a public policy body nor do we intend to be. But we are uniquely situated to gather data from all 33 counties and provide compiled reports to policymakers so that they can make better informed decisions. We're in that unique position. And so we take that opportunity through the work of our Government Accountability Office. That office is also responsible for when you help us know about some risk out there that may be systemic, that other entities may be exposed to, but you've learned about first, we get to use this division to notify the public. Remember the funny money that was coming out a couple months ago, right? How about the, the, the phishing scams that are going on, right? All these notices come out of our Government Accountability Office. Now the good news is, is you'll get to hear a lot more about that division from somebody far more entertaining than me. She's even a little smarter than me, but don't tell her, because then all of a sudden it'll go to her head. She already thinks she's the boss. Of me. Uh, then we have regulation and compliance. You're familiar with the work there. That's our tier reporting system, and uh, our uh, New Mexico Deputy State Auditor will cover a little bit of that. And the administrative side, which you've met some this morning, you met Frank, and um, they do great work. And most of you are super grateful for the work that division has done over the last few years because it took us from the Stone Ages to the present time. You know, with the OSA Connect. Everybody here know OSA Connect, right? You use it, our contracting process. That's thanks to that administrative division. So this is my team. This is the team that I get to work with every day. And again, if you wonder why I always wake up in a good mood and a heart filled with gratitude, it's because 53% of the people that work in my office are women. The rest are men. 
<laughs> and it's as diverse as one could want it to be. Tons of great people who are deeply, deeply committed to serving New Mexico, just like each and every one of you. So for me, it's an honor to be a part of that team. So as I've alluded to earlier, I'm big about celebrating success, about making sure, see, they normally take like 12-minute intervals, but they're having to go eight because I just talk too much and too fast. But they do a great job, huh? How about a round of our applause for folks that <laughs> serve us in the business teams that are so active on their staff that they keep them to realize how valuable they are. Well, I do. I do, and I'm grateful. So we remember to celebrate the milestones as we prepare for the road ahead. So let me tell you a little bit about where we've been the last 102 days. In the first 30 days, I had the honor and privilege of reaching out to experts all over the state of New Mexico to help select who would be New Mexico's deputy state auditor. Not my deputy, but New Mexico's deputy state auditor. And for me, it was pretty exciting because having sought high and low, east and west, north and south, I was able to get just a fantastic superstar. Really the first choice in my book and uh, she's somebody who's not only the office of the state auditor in the past, she's also been an auditor in the past. Not only has she been an auditor in the past, she's now been the CFO for a very substantial statewide governmental agency. And I was able to say, don't you want to work at a place that celebrates excellence every day? Don't you want to be in a place that embraces accountability, transparency, and excellence every day? And don't you want to see me succeed? Because without you, I'm not sure that I can. And thankfully she said yes. Kind of like my wife did 23 years ago. It's so nice when they say yes. <laughs> and let me tell you, being a redheaded, freckle-faced, heavyset kid in school, when I asked ladies to say yes, they didn't always happen back then. <laughs> I'm telling you that's true, but this superstar said yes, and I couldn't be more pleased to have announced my deputy auditor in the first 30 days. We had our budget hearing in Santa Fe, and boy, was that a trip. I mean, anybody been to budget hearings here in Santa Fe? Raise your hand if you've been to a budget here. So you know, you guys, you guys and gals are going to appreciate this. Yeah. So I went up there, and this is me. Like, if I'm out of bed, this is me. Like, for those of you that have known me for a while, right, you know this is me. Even Machuca, where's Machuca? See, he's, is he outside? He's not even in the room. Que <laughs> barbaro. <laughs> he's like, I've been listening to this guy talk for 30 years. I don't need to be in the room. No, this is me. Tell him I just called him out. So, 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 this is me. And so, this is who went to the budget hearing, right? And I'm so proud. No, I got my whole team with me. I literally took the office with me and said, we're all gonna go to the Capitol, and I'm gonna get to show this Capitol the great team that we have here. In we took them in there. I did my presentation. I'm like, oh man, it's been 45 days of awesome. I'm so happy and excited to be here. Let me tell you about our budget. Let me tell you what we need. Let me tell you how we're going to get it done. Yeah, their eyes lit up. They were so happy. They were smiling back at me. The chair of House Appropriations and Finance Committee. I'm like, ooh, I worked on your campaign when I was 12. <laughs> now this is all going to be great. I'm going to get the resources I need to do the job I want to do. Right? Say, so finish the hearing. They clap for us. The audience claps for us. It was great. <laughs> hey, I'm going to do good today. We're going to get some good music. Then what happened? They gave me the same budget we had last year. Actually, that's not exactly true. I'll tell you a little more later. But I can only imagine what would have happened to my budget if I didn't do a good job that they said I did. We did our own rule changes, we published those, and let me tell you something, the team that stood up here today, actually they're not all here, because we have this thing in government called Flex. What in the world is that? I've been in the private sector my whole life. Flex, how come I'm the only one in the office on Fridays? <laughs> oh, Mr. Auditor, we have a flex schedule here. It's not a flex schedule, that's more like my waistline, it goes up, it goes down, but that's a flex schedule. They said, oh, we do four tens and three and a half nines and every other Friday and a Monday till two. And I have no idea who comes into the office on one day and I've been working for 102 days. All I know is I'm there every day. So if you want to come by, I'm there. Right next door, actually. Um, but uh, who was the point of all that? Okay, huh? Here we go. So in the first 60 days, can you imagine?
imagine that team with their flex schedule, they buckle down, focused, and got your work done. Because you know, in those first, first days in office, we released over 361 audits that had been sitting in the office of the state auditor. Phenomenal, though. Those are civil servants that did that work, just like each and every one of you. Those are the same civil servants that don't get the gracias from any New Mexican out there. Because all they hear about is the bad news. But let me tell you, the team got that stuff cranked out in the first 60 days. In 90 days, we started this audit rule road show. We're doing active recruitment at OSA. Let me tell you a little bit about that. Now, everybody looks straightforward. I don't want anybody to be uncomfortable here. I know some of you are with your supervisor, so don't get too excited when I tell you this. We're hiring at OSA. <laughs> You're getting excited, I see you. Don't let your supervisor see you. Don't nod your head. Although I like that your eyes are sparkling a little bit. <laughs> Leandro, you've only been in your job for 30 days. You can't come work with me, sorry. In all seriousness, if we're going to embrace excellence, we have to go to excellence to find more. So I need you, even if you're happy where you're working today, I need you to reach out to your colleagues, the professionals that you know that might be interested in joining this phenomenal team that we have at OSA. Because we have several openings. You know, when I walked in the front door, we had over a 20% vacancy rate. And after dealing with me after, for 102 days, the vacancy rate's up to 32%. I'm just kidding, that's not true. That's not true. 120 days and beyond. Let's talk a little bit about where we're headed from here. We're going to wrap up this tour. We're going to be speaking to 300 folks here in Santa Fe today. On Monday, we'll have nearly 500 civil servants come out. I mean, it's a sold out performance. It's going to be awesome. And then we're going to take this office on the road. Because for far too often, we've expected New Mexicans to come to us at the office of the state auditor. We've expected your colleagues in Raton, in Deming, to come up to Santa Fe to meet with the Office of the State Auditor. And I actually intend in the next 12 months to be in all 33 counties. In the last week alone, I've traveled over 2,000 miles doing outreach for the Office of the State Auditor. And I'm just getting warmed up. I've also learned, um, I was going to say, I've also learned about having to fill out these reimbursements and mileage and <laughs> For deal. I'm the state auditor, I can't figure that stuff out. Receipts, no receipts, receipts, no tango. Okay, here we go. So we're going to do that 33 county tour. As you might guess, uh, we deal with risk in our office every day, but let me tell you my perspective on risk. See, we do have these three designations. I've got some of my cherished IPAs in the room, and on occasion they have to have qualified opinions, adverse opinions and sometimes they have to disclaim. Those stakeholders that are our independent public accountants, we take their work seriously. And we take this very seriously. Now how do I think we ought to deal with that? It gets back to what I said seven minutes ago, which is we're partners. Part of my job is to help deliver good government. Part of my job that I take super seriously is restoring the faith of the public in government. Because I think most of us can agree that in many cases that faith has been broken. That trust has been betrayed. So my job is to work with you as stakeholders, to work with our independent public accountants, to make sure that we get you from these lists to where you want to be. And if you're on these lists on a recurring basis, your divisions aren't doing your work, but I'm not doing mine either. So know that I'm a partner with you in good times and bad. Right? That doesn't mean I'm going to lose my independence, but it does mean that our agency is there to support you and get you where you want to be. Does that make sense? Yes or yes? Okay, good. You're still with me. I like that. So we, we, we talk about growth and improvement all the time. Isn't that a cute slide they put for me? Get it, growth. Green. We're in Santa Fe! Green! Come on now! The green economy. So, again, we like to celebrate and embrace excellence. We had a county that had been on the happiness list for years. 
because they were perpetually and every year they were late, late, late. And this year I was very pleased that they came in not only on time, but they were early. And several public schools, and I want to credit the team at OSA because in working with our schools, we've helped really understand and identify where the risks are that are recurring. And we're going to do an even better <coughs> job of that. Like we know that the 24-hour rule is something that we need to talk more about. We know that internal controls are something we need to talk more about. Right? See, the other thing is, there's been so much excellence going on around here. The reason I have all those job openings is because other people get great jobs like deputy secretaries over here. Now, how about a round of applause for my former team member who's now had a deputy secretary question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But we had a substantial decrease this last year in our findings for our schools, which is awesome. Like, all of you do work that touches our children, but how much more so for our schools? So we're doing good work with our partners in the schools. We've got connect updates and improvements. I'm very pleased to tell you that one of the upsides of our vacancy rate is that I'm deeply connected to, what do they call it? Going to the bar or moving the bar when I change my budget thing. Laura, what do I do? Raise the bar. Oh, I'm raising the bar. I'm thinking. <laughs> so, so I'm going to work with my team to make sure that we can get some of these updates that you have suggested by working with my administrative team on how we can improve OSA Connect and continue to make our contracting process more user-friendly. And so we're going to do that this year. And we're going to update that antique website. You know, a website goes antique after just one year, no? All the young people in the audience know what I'm talking about. Do we have any young people? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. And now here's the good news here on this uh, growth and improvement. I am very excited to tell you that because of that song and dance I did, because I had an attitude of gratitude when I was up there at the legislature, I said, if you could do one thing, if you could do only one thing, let's make sure that we partner with our small public bodies. Really, a lot of the public bodies that tell our story in New Mexico that embrace our heritage, our culture, and tell our story. The Asequia Associations, the Water Authorities, the Land Grants. These organizations are so important to preserving and promoting our culture and who we are. And as I stand in Santa Fe, more than ever, the oldest capital, the most history, right here where we stand. And unfortunately, most of those associations don't have the resources, the feria, to do what they need to do to come into compliance with the audit rules so that they can then be qualified for capital outlay, to put in the box culvert, to do the repairs there with pacientes there in their community, to clean out the acequia. Where was I? I was just somewhere, Taos. Taos has an acequia that the pacientes cleaned out and operated and worked on over the last few months, that acequia hasn't had running water for 50 years. Guess what? It's got running water this year. That's a good thing for New Mexico. That's a good thing. And so for those small public bodies, that's where the legislature was good to me. And they said, we're going to take you from $20,000 last year to $100,000 in grants for this, those bodies. How about a round of applause for supporting our very people? people, 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 people. So let me just say this, we, uh, as you know, we had the audit rule hearing. The only thing I want to mention on this slide is that if you did not engage with our group and our team as we published and uh, put out the audit rule in its draft form, I want to encourage you to do it next year. You all are utilizing this every single day. You know what's working and what's not. We really do value your feedback. And much of the feedback that we got from some of the people in this room, thank you very much, um, was incorporated as we made our final decisions on the audit rule. Right, Huck? Thank you. And I want to encourage you to do that next year. Okay? So if you don't know about that, did anybody not know about that? I guess depending on what department and divisions, maybe you didn't know about that. But we do publish the proposed audit rule and we do take comments and feedback on it. So if you have suggestions, don't hesitate to reach out to OSA. Uh, we've got 19 key changes in those Top lines are going to be covered by our Deputy State Auditor of New Mexico, Natalie Cordova, CPA, and she'll handle that. We're going to keep moving New Mexico forward. We're going to hit the 33 counties on our, on our tour. We're going to do auto rule light training 
We're going to make ourselves available. We're going to go into schools. And we're going to make ourselves available to elected officials and division leaders like each of you so that I can be there to answer questions and to hear your feedback. Nothing's more important. We're going to embrace excellence every day at the Office of the State Auditor, and that means that we have to be your partner. You have to know that I see you as stakeholders in our office. Now, the other thing you have to know is that in 102 days, I've learned something very important. Oscar was so true when he said this. He said, some cause happiness wherever they go, Others, whenever they go. <laughs> and I learned the state auditor usually have make people happy when I go. <laughs> like, Adios, vaya con Dios. <laughs> so look, I'm going to close with that. I'm going to just say that it really is a privilege to be your state auditor. I'm going to be here. I'm happy to uh, visit with you. You'll have my contact information. I see a lot of you brought your fancy little notebooks and laptops. At the end of the slideshow, you'll see my contact information in there. It's there for a reason, don't hesitate to use it. If I'm not getting it right, don't hesitate to hold me accountable. I can only do a good job if the stakeholders have open lines of communication. It's that way in my office, and it should be that way in the field. Like I told my team, I got my chief of staff here, I said, uh, can we take the pins out of that door and just take the door off the hinges? That's what I mean when I say open door policy. He said, well, Mr. Auditor, you have a lot of confidential conversations and we can't really do that. So I had to leave my door on, but I can tell you it's mostly open. And that's how I want you to look at my office as a state auditor. We are partners, you're my stakeholders. I want to say thank you to our IPAs who are in the room, the independent public accountants. Every year they go through a rigorous process to be able to have the pleasure and opportunity to work with you on your audit. And I'm going to ask any of our IPAs in the room to stand up and be recognized. Thank you for coming out today. And give them a round of applause. They are truly our stakeholders. Did you see Harry over here? That's Machuca that I was talking about earlier. He was out playing hooky. You wanted the donuts before everybody else had a choice, no? You better not eat my peanut butter and jelly one, dude. That's my favorite. Uh, again, I want to close by saying thank you to the New Mexico Society of CPAs uh, for helping sponsor your refreshments. I want to thank you for being here today, and uh, I wish you continued success in the work you do. And remember, as I travel those 33 counties, Anytime I'm given the opportunity to lift you up, to celebrate your work, and to write, remind people to say thank you to their civil servants, I will do it. That opportunity will never be missed. Because I'm humble, privileged, and proud to have been your state auditor for the last 102 days. Thank you very much.